gonna shake up, wake up, move you, network you up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find out more about George Frazier, go to his site. But right now, stand to your feet and welcome the number one guru in network marketing, my friend, realtor's friend and associate, George C. Frazier. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's hear it for George Frazier. He's going to tear it up. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, family. It's good to be back. Let me just start by saying, may God grant me the words to speak your thoughts. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Julius, as I've said to you many times, if I could not be me, I would want to be you. You are an awesome young brother. You are a young lion. You are a true example of amazing, youthful leadership. And I, I just wish there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more like you. Thank you. I want to thank Bank of America, and Chase, and City, and those who support us, and we know who they are. And you know, there's probably 50 or 60 companies out of the Fortune 500 that show up on all these lists, the Black Enterprise list, the NAACP list, the Urban League list, um, but there's a thing called the Fortune 500. That means there are probably 450 or so companies that really don't invest back in us. And so we must be mindful of that, part of the economic leakage in our community, supporting those who do not support us. Now, I've said this before, I don't know what BMW does for black people, okay? I speak all over this country. I speak at every major black conference. I don't see BMW's ads in black newspapers. I don't hear their ads on black radio stations. I don't see any displays at any of the black conferences in America. So I don't know what BMW does. Maybe they're doing something, but I don't know what it is. I, I know what Ford does. I know what General Motors does. I, I know what Toyota does. Um, I know what Chrysler does, but I don't know what BMW does. And, um, but we buy more BMWs per capita, black people, than any other cultural group in America. And uh, let me say that differently. If you're going to give me all of your money and expect nothing in return, I'm going to take all of your money and give you nothing in return. So again, kudos to those institutions that support NARAB. We have to make sure that we support them. I want to take a passage from the Bible, Proverbs 27. 23 to 24, and it reads, Know well the condition of your flocks, and give attention to your herds, for riches do not last forever. As Shakespeare said, know thyself. I talked about the need for us as adults, African Americans who are doing well, to reach down and to lift up, to reach back and to pull forward, and to change the trajectory of our community. If Dr. King were to come back here today, he would be ecstatic that Barack Hussein Obama is president of the United States. He predicted that. But he would be very angry with us about everything else. We are at the bottom of every single statistic that matters in America. 72% of our children are born out of wedlock, and 50% of those children are not graduating from high school. Can you imagine a black man in America without a high school diploma in the 21st century? Where is he going? He's going to jail. We have more black men in prison on probation and parole than were enslaved in 1850. 31% of our women are getting married. And for the 26th year in a row, we were at the bottom of the SAT scores. We are in a downward spiral. I'm 67 years old. I know I look 35 or 40, but you know black don't crack, right? <laughs> we are in a downward spiral, and I have not seen it like this in my 67 years. It's never been done in the 400-year history of our people. We are the only generation to raise another generation that will be worse off. We are fundamentally and economically illiterate people. We are a $920 billion annual economy, and our money goes in one direction away from us and with some of America's most conspicuous consumers. We, <clears throat> we must fix this in the 21st century. We must change the kitchen table conversation in our community. First, we must get back to the kitchen table, and then we must change the conversation around the kitchen table, because you see, it's no longer important what Beyonce is going to wear to the BET Awards. No one cares about that. That's not what Jewish people are talking about around their kitchen table. 
They're talking with their children about where they're going to college, not if they're going to college. They're talking about their businesses and they're talking about their money. And so we need to change the kitchen table conversation. We need to get back to basics. This is what I talked about the last time we were together. Networking will be the infrastructure that will allow us to complete the third and final moral imperative and moral assignment for our people. We have been focused on two goals at FraserNet. One is to help black people build wealth that can be transferred intergenerationally. Again, that is not to say that we do not have wealth. As I said earlier, we are a $920 billion annual economy. If we were a nation, we'd be the 16th richest nation in the entire world. But we don't keep our money. It recycles five, less than 5% of our money recycles in our own community. It goes one direction away from us. We need to fix this. So we're not poor, we're just broke. Right? Capitalism without capital is just isn't. And right now, we have most of the isms. And the second thing that we are working on at FraserNet is to make black people the number one employer of black people in the 21st century. <laughs> now, you notice I said 21st century. I didn't say while I'm living. I didn't even say while you're living. I believe that this, both of these goals will take about 100 years to achieve. It will take three to five generations especially the, that goal of helping us to become the number one employer of our own people. We must do this because it is the only way to raise up the poor. And every immigrant group that has ever come to this great country has understood that for black people. As Jews are the number one employer of Jews, Asians are the number one employer of Asians, East Indians are the number one employer of East Indians, Arabs are the number one employer of Arabs, we too must ultimately become the number one employer of our own people. Make no mistake. You are contributing to that goal. Most of you are self-employed, and you employ others. God bless you for doing that. I've been talking about it for 30 years. I've written four best-selling best books on it. I've, tributed, uh, I've flown five million frequent flyer miles. I've given over 2,000 speeches. I've talked to thousands and thousands and thousands of our people, and I've noticed some things about us that we need to fix. The first is we must understand the power of connecting the dots. America has given us all they're going to give us. We have freedom, civil rights, voting rights, and public access. You ain't getting white folks money. You have to kill them first, and you ain't killing them, so you're going to have to compete with them. You want to compete with white people and Asians, you better bring your lunch. Because if you're black and mediocre in America, you better leave. Because you will be marginalized, and you will ultimately be destroyed in this country. Your mama told you, as, as my mama told me, if you got to be twice as good to get half as much. That was right then, and it's still right. Right? So are you ramping up your game? And coming to events like this where you're learning, where you're constantly growing, where you're learning the latest technologies, you're learning the latest mortgage systems and so forth, and building new relationships, this counts. You've invested in yourself to be here in San Diego. That ain't cheap. of searching and viewing homes that are miles away and even in different states through the internet in the comfort of their own bed. And if they're really tech savvy, they may use their iPads and iPhones to go house hunting. Realists, I'm sure you will agree, there is an app for that. However, according to the real estate industry news, in the day and age of modern technology, still 89% of home buyers still use a real estate agent. And what's even more amazing is that with all of the technology, those who go on the internet to search for a home, 91% still use a real estate agent. See, the more things change, NARAB, the more things stay the same. Like most of my competitors here at Wells Fargo, we have an array of products, conventional, FHA, VA, USDA, just to name a few all with various terms and features to meet your needs. So Bridget, what makes Wells Fargo so special? It's our culture. 
If you walk into a Wells Fargo office or bank, you may find a quote from one of our founders, Henry Wells, and it says, there was one very powerful business rule. It was concentrated in the word courtesy. Wells Fargo has employed African Americans since its founding in 1852. Like thousands during this time, African Americans came to California, right here, from all over the world in search of gold. In the West, many found great opportunities and often bought freedom for their enslaved relatives through their earnings. As they settled into this Western community and to, into their professions during the 1850s, Wells Fargo and Company served and employed African Americans. We are America's number one small business lender and are committed to helping African-American business owners access capital and financial resources. Wells Fargo is also the number one originator of home loans across the board in all key categories, including African-Americans, Asians, Hispanic, Native Americans, and low to moderate income borrowers. We are committed to increasing home ownership. I challenge all of us here to be like the great Sequoia Redwood trees strong, enduring, virtuous, and willing to lend strength to each other, especially when trials and challenges come. We have to lead ourselves, lead our teams, and lead our communities. Let's stand proud of our heritage, knowing that every home you sell and every loan you originate, you are turning someone's dream into a reality and helping families build legacies for generations to come. NARAB is thriving, local chapters are growing, rates are falling, Wells Fargo is lending, and thank God customers are purchasing. The more things change, NARAB, the more they stay the same. <laughs>